Would you believe it if I said I never spent anything at all in this adventure? I'm gonna show you how to have an adventure without grand spending. Ordinarily, when planning a trip, first question would be, where should we go? No, 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 no. Not in this channel. Here, the first question we're going to ask is, how much can I spend? But really, the real question is, how much am I willing to spend? Let's check on my large wallet, which I really don't trust in these times. Oh, dear. And aside from the Philippine pesos, there are... Countless of receipts, more receipts, useless cards, and coins. Let us count how much I can spend in this adventure. 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I am capable of spending 111 yen. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. It's okay. At least I'm rich in stuff toys. Okay, enough about the drum. I've already accepted how broke and cheap I really am. But this bucket list will not act by itself. That's why regardless of how penniless I really am, I have to go on an adventure. I just have to get so creative that I don't have to spend any money at all. Because this cannot simply afford taxis or bus. I only have two options. Either I use my bicycle or I use the way of our ancient ancestor which is using my own two feet. <laughs> it doesn't only save you money, it also makes you exercise. Small and large shrines are everywhere. That's why hiking in Japan is also part sightseeing. I personally recommend a few moments later This is an extremely large lake Spanning from way down there To way up here I've often wondered where this body of water comes from That's why we're going to follow a river upstream The fact that this greenery and clear waters exist in the middle of a busy city in Mishima along a busy highway even is amazing to me and the fact that this is not a single exemption blows my Filipino mind away After crossing a busy road I continued to follow the river upstream and I came upon this new destination the ground was a little bit wet from the rain showers yesterday. But I like this place the most because you could not just only get up and close personal with the waters. There were little to no people at all. absolutely adore the cool and refreshing waters here, especially so in this hot and humid summer day of 36.4 degrees Celsius. After a quick rest and shade to cool down, I went about my adventure once again, following the river that I still don't know the name of. Once again, I needed to cross another busy road. I entered into Seseragi Nordic Trail. As I walk through this path, 
the large trees which provide shade are highly appreciated. By this time, because of the heat, I almost turned back and thoughts of giving up continued to entice me. Thankfully, I reached this unexpected park for a much-needed respite. These trees are momiji. Can you imagine how beautiful this place would be in autumn? A river sandwiched by brilliant red maple trees. I hope I have time to come back. I was already walking for more than two hours and I desperately needed to take a break. My feet hurt too much at that time to care for propriety. And it wouldn't be typical Japan without seeing Koi. I thought at first that this was a small park and boy was I glad that I was wrong because this was an amazingly beautiful place, very zen. The sound of nature covers the noise pollution that the city produces. As I continued my adventure upstream once again, this small walkway in the middle of the river was a foreshadowing of what was to come. Beautiful tall flowers welcome me into this long and narrow path. I never expected to be literally walking on top of the river when I started this adventure. There's a small restaurant overlooking this part of the river. Kinda want to try it, but too broke to do so. Is it just me or does anybody else likes going under bridges too? This place was where the river was the noisiest. Places like this are why I find Japan attractive. It has the historical charm with modern comfort. There was an unagi restaurant beside this place and it smelled so good. I had to cross another busy road and enter this very narrow street and into this large temple. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of this temple. When I saw the cemetery and this historical place, I thought I was lost. Thankfully, my directions from local health was right. After hours of walking, I finally discovered the name of this river. This is Genbi River.
I have now reached the widest part of the river, which is unfortunately the busiest and has the most crowd. I guess we can call this place the water park of the river. There were children having fun, playing, and splashing around while parents gossing about God knows what. The next part of my adventure wasn't just a long and narrow path like before, it was also wet. Honestly, my feet were tired, but I wasn't ready to give up yet. And thankfully, I didn't wear shoes, so it was an easy decision. Around this time, I realized this will be the end of my upstream river hike because the source of this river is beyond that wall of greenery, Rakujuwing Park, of which as an entrance fee my 111 yen can't afford to pay. So I went home on the shortest walk possible, being in constant state of hunger because of these restaurants. And that's Zero Yen Adventure.